Today I'll be sharing my modification of this 2018 Ghostbusters Proton Pack. When I saw this on YouTube, I knew I had to have it. There are other YouTubers who have uh, repainted these and made them look proper original, and that's great. But the most important thing for me, as somebody who grew up with Ghostbusters is, this thing's not useful for anything unless it can bust something. So I've modified this one with a two watt purple laser that is absolutely dangerous. Don't try this at home. Safety first, these lasers are not a toy. They will blind you permanently. So first we're gonna go ahead and power on. And then with the flip of the switch that I've added, we get our purple cutting laser. Pretty cool stuff, right? Let's get to it. The first thing you'll need is the Ghostbusters Proton Pack, which you can get from Spirit Halloween on their website for about $69. The next thing you're going to need is a laser module. What you see here is a picture of a module taken out of a laser pointer. The module has the laser diode, which is the front, which emits the laser. And behind that, the circuit board is the driver. So by taking this out of a handheld laser, all those things are integrated together and they're designed to be placed inside of a tube, which is exactly what we want. So what I did for this project is I obtained a Thor laser, T-H-O-R, Thor. In this case, the Thor laser is a handheld two watt purple blue laser and it is sufficient to cut through objects and burn and do different things like that. Um, the difficulty is in getting the laser diode and driver out of these. They're not designed to be taken apart. And so you'd have to do a little bit of Dremel work with a cutting wheel to extract the diode from the tube. There's no way in most cases to just pull them out. They're either glued in or they're engineered to stay inside the tube one way or another. So you'd have to actually cut through that. Once that's done, assembly is pretty easy. All right, so here we have the inside of the particle wand. Just a couple things to be aware of. This comes apart into a total of four pieces. There's this shell, which covers up to the handle, and it's just two parts, and inside that is the electronics. Uh, and, and, and that happens quite a lot with this thing. Um, then the handle comes apart into two parts as well, and these are prone to break easily, and so I had to modify the handle um, by putting a dowel all the way through the handle and still leaving enough room to finish the wiring. That gave it sort of a nice strong um, handling. It's still quite delicate, but it's better than it was. But what we're really concerned about right now is uh, how we put the laser in. So the laser diode is at the end of this tube. Now this is just a piece of metal tubing, probably very thin steel, from a mop handle that I got at the dollar store. Uh, it perfectly fit the uh, two watt diode right inside there, at least close to perfectly. I then had to take some really thin sheet copper and wrap that around the diode to make a nice tight fit into this tube. Now that was important because as you can see, the, really the only thing holding this tube in here is hot glue. And that allowed me to tune um, the, the focal length of the laser and then lock it into place. Uh, the problem is these two watt lasers get really, 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 really hot and would melt not only the hot glue, but really hot. It would melt through the plastic if it was left on too long. So this metal tube solved two problems. The first problem it solved is it keeps the diode stationary inside the tube. So the diode is only about this wide. Uh, and that allows me, the longer the tube, the clearer line of sight, the more, um, more alignment I will have with that diode because the diode is coin shaped. Um, and then it's wicking off heat through the copper, which is just a little sheet of copper in here, down through the tube so that this never really gets all that hot and that won't melt the glue and it won't melt the plastic. And we could just see the power wires coming out of here. Now, I rerouted power away from the props. I gave it its own power system. It's got its own battery system, which I'll show you in just a moment. And that goes to a rocker switch that I installed specifically to turn the laser on and off separately from the system. Now there's another way to disable this. Not only can I turn it off here, but the battery pack has an on and off for safety as well. Really difficult part was lining up the um, focusing um, lens, which is located in this housing here, which is another part of these props that break really easy the first time you drop this, and you will drop it, um, this, this breaks. Uh, what I wanted to do is have the focusing crystal in here so that this will illuminate 
and I could then expand or contract the location of the emitter to tune the crystal in and out. And I've got that pretty much worked out, but it's a bit touchy. I'm not too worried about it because after all, this is a prop, not a functional uh, piece of equipment. The reason you're gonna drop this is because the cable they use for this is just way too rigid for these very lightweight plastic props, and this thing just wiggles its way out of your hand constantly. I might even add some lead fishing weights to this just to offset the restriction that I get from this cabling. For me, it's not worth taking all these wires out and feeding them through a new cable for this project. It's something you might want to consider, though. So I have the crystal, uh, or the focusing lens, located again inside this plastic tube, and that is inside various uh, lengths of tubing that would bring the, the laser's diameter up to uh, the equal diameter of the inside of this tube here. So that took a little bit of um, discovery engineering and going through my junk drawer to find just the right things to put that crystal in. Now the reason I chose to do it this way is I obtained this laser from a Thor, uh, uh, titled Thor, T-H-O-R, uh, two watt laser pointer. And in disassembling that, which is an extremely difficult process without a Dremel tool and some elbow grease, um, the focusing lens is separate from the diode. They're not connected anymore because I disabled, I disconnected all of the tubing that, that uh, made the laser pointer one piece. And so they had to be realigned this way. And the alignment is a little bit rough because this comes down to uh, millimeters of, of adjustment for focal length um, even just handling the, 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 the laser um, will cause it to go in and out of focus just because it is flimsy plastic. So again, for my purposes as a prop, it works just fine. It's spectacular to see. And if I'm not trying to specifically burn something, the focal length is really irrelevant. In fact, the more out of focus it goes, the more spectacular it's going to look outside uh, in humid air uh, just for show. So that's fine. Now we'll take a look at the battery. The battery pack that comes with the prop is just uh, three AA batteries with an on-off switch. Um, not quite enough power to operate the laser, so what I needed to do is give it its own power system. So this is just an Eligu Robotics um, battery harness that I, I recycled for another project. These are uh, 18650 batteries, uh, 3.7 volts each and they're both powering that laser so it's a lot of power going into that and that's what's generating that heat uh, it was a lot easier to do these as two separate separate electrical systems and try to integrate them and have to worry about uh, parallel circuits and things like that so it's also a lot safer that way and i can maintain my batteries separately so now let's just take the uh, ghostbusters proton pack through its paces and see how it performs Now we'll see how long it takes to bust this guy. Right in the eye. Not that long. <laughs> 